Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast from meteorologist Ashley Baylor. Actually, not too far from where my parents live in Florida. Uh, yeah, so this has basically been affecting everybody up and down the East Coast. You can see the rain stretches all the way into northern New England through the Mid Atlantic, stretching all the way down into Miami. And earlier today, there were some very strong storms in Florida. There was a tornado watch. Uh, posted for a period of time. And we will still be watching out for the possibility of an isolated, strong, potentially severe thunderstorm or two as we go through uh, the overnight hours, specifically for Northeast North Carolina and the Outer Banks. So uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a look at our radar first, where you can see we are tracking. Uh, Relatively steady rain moving across the south side, now up across the peninsula and into uh, the eastern shore. Now, let's stop this, and you can see that in addition to light rain, we do have some pockets of moderate rainfall out there, specifically again across northeast North Carolina. These splashes of yellows and orange indicate more of a moderate rainfall. It stretches from South Mills through Belvedere over towards Edenton, just south of Elizabeth City, and over towards Corolla. We will get bouts of moderate to heavy rain as we go through the overnight hours. But let's talk about that probability of severe. Thunderstorms. You can see it has diminished considerably across the tidewater region. When you see this light shade of green here, that just indicates the possibility for your garden variety thunderstorms. But we have a marginal to slight risk posted for northeast North Carolina and the outer banks. So that's where you could see. A few isolated storms developed that may produce some uh, downpours that may lead to localized flooding, potentially some strong wind gusts, and I wouldn't even rule out the possibility of an isolated weak tornado. We already did have one tornado warning that went in effect for mainland Dare County earlier, but nothing really came of that. So overnight, we will continue to track rain, and as you can see, even heading into early tomorrow morning, right around 4 o'clock, we could get some uh, bouts of heavier rainfall out there, this indicating the possibility of some isolated thunderstorms. So Friday is a situation where we will not have steady rain Rainfall from start to finish. There are going to be some breaks in the action. You still want to keep an umbrella and stand by. So on and off showers expected through the day. And you can see our future track forecast kind of very eager to break these clouds apart by tomorrow evening. And I just don't think that'll be the case. I think even when you're able to put the umbrella away, the clouds will stay in their place, kind of drag their heels across the region. So going into Saturday, we'll start with a little bit of residual cloud cover, but that'll quickly give way to lots of sunshine as we head into the afternoon. Saturday, it is going to remain a little bit breezy, but temperatures will actually be slightly above average. So no complaints there. As far as rainfall totals between today and tomorrow go, we're looking at anywhere between half an inch, upwards of an inch in some spots, possibly even to an inch and a half. I think two inches is definitely on the higher end of things. That's where maybe you'd get a couple of those heavy downpours. That's when it could start to add up. But two inches definitely on the high end. Now here's a look at Tower Camp 10, where it is actually pretty windy out there, especially aloft. I mean, look how quickly those clouds are actually moving on Tower Camp. It's not often we actually get to catch the clouds moving uh, so swiftly on a stagnant camera. So we're sitting at 61 degrees in Virginia Beach. It's 65 in Currituck, 65 in Ahoski, and about 57 degrees at Wallop Island. One thing that's helping us out in addition to the clouds at night is we do have the southeast wind blowing anywhere between 8 to 20 miles per hour. That's mixing the atmosphere and allowing temperatures to actually increase. So we'll be in the mid-60s heading into tomorrow morning, and by the afternoon we'll be in the upper 60s. So I did increase the numbers a little bit from when we were on earlier today. So if you are traveling tomorrow, uh, it won't be poor, it'll be more fair just because we will still have showers across the region. And in fact, again, showers expected through much of the mid-Atlantic stretching up into New England. So you definitely want to check your flights if you're flying to make sure there are no delays or cancellations. Looking a lot better for it Saturday and Sunday. Here's your seven-day forecast. So Saturday and Sunday we are dry. And in fact, we stay nice and dry for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. You can catch up with us at wavy.com.